Welcome into the Like a Mobile Jaguars Jam Week 5. J.P. Shadrick and Jaguars punter Logan Cook. What's up, Logan? Good to see you, man. Good. How's it going? Oh, it's it's going well. It's going well for the Jags. Yes, it Three is. Three and one. Sure. And, uh, heading to Kansas City this yeah. week. Yeah, hostile place, man. Yeah. I played in some big places in the SEC, but uh, Tink keeps telling me that this place is different, so we'll see. It's one of the loudest in all of football. Yeah. College, pro, no matter what, and you're going to get a full dose of that, I think, yeah, this I Sunday. So uh, this is for our U.K. audience. We've got some media questions from the U.K. We've got some fan questions. You ready to get to them here? Let's go. Let's start off. Number one today from Alex Johnson <laughs> of Give Me Sport. Talk us through your specific role in training as a punter when other groups are running drills. I know the, the specialists, well, they're special. They're on a different field right. altogether, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's different, and uh, it's just like probably a specialist in high school would be in college and NFL. You kind of – you're off on a field by yourself the whole time. And, uh, you know, but the big deal is when, when your name gets called in practice or in a game, you know, you better be ready. And there's been plenty of times, not here yet, but college uh, especially, we'd be three fields over and they'd, they'd call for field goal and we didn't know what was happening. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden we have to run over there and they expect you to, to, to make the kick. So it's just – I mean, kind of how it was in college, you know, you just – Look busy and be busy, and when your name gets called, you know you better perform. Be aware of the situation exactly. in the game yeah. as well, because that could change at a moment's notice. Let's continue with the media question. Anthony Wooten from Love Sport Radio. How do you manage to get a spiral when you're kicking the ball? We're getting deep into fundamentals We're getting deep here. now, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the main thing is your drop. And uh, w one thing, some punters are different, and uh, my drop's usually about 11 o'clock is about where I'm holding the, the nose of the ball is pointing. Some some punters are uh, 12 and some punters are 9. Some punters cock the ball more. Hmm. And uh, pretty pretty much is how it matches your foot. And um, it's all physics. You know, if you, if you drop the ball lower, the, the nose is going to be more down, and uh, that causes the ball to go off the outside of your foot and, and get your, your spiral. So Wow. Yeah. Uh, I never really thought about the clock. The, right. The, the, that's, and some punters are different. You it know, takes uh, a, a, lot, a lot of practice to learn what exactly. that is, though, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, interesting stuff. Now, let's uh, continue with a fan question now. Pedal Ben, what gave you more satisfaction, the preseason <laughs> hit or winning the rookie cooking competition? Um, I think the hit. I have to take the hit on this one. Uh, the cooking competition was fun, uh, but that was kind of a shoe in, you know. But uh, <laughs> what, did you, what did you win with in the, the um, competition? I, I made kind of like a, a Creole shrimp Alfredo, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so cooks in my name, so you know I've, I grew up cooking, so uh -huh. I enjoyed. But now the hit for sure, that was that was fun. Your so. uh, celebration was yeah, I didn't know what I was doing, you know. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie, and, and any punter kicker can tell you this: as soon as you make a big hit, you know you kind of black out for a second, and you, you don't have control of your body. So penalty flag or not, it was uh, worth yeah. celebrating. Yeah, I about. actually got the flag. Some people, you know, I think. The commentator said it was from a celebration penalty, but it was all helmet to helmet. So, yeah. Oh, well. I think Jody said I should have got a penalty for my celebration, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Let's continue another fan question. Stuart Hunt, given the lack of glamour attached to your position, how did you end up becoming a punter? And was it a role that always appealed to you? These stories are always pretty interesting. How you end up yeah. in your position. Um, no, so it never really appealed to me. I never really. I mean, I, I kicked when I was. Uh, a kid and grew up kicking on the high school field after games. Me and my dad would be down there, and but uh, I never really punted. And um, my dad actually punted in high school, so he knew more about that than kicking. But he, um, you know, I started punting more my sophomore, junior year of high school. I think I might have been at uh, Alabama's camp, and um, I was punting just because all the kickers had to eventually punt. And I actually punted pretty good, and um, I figured out I was going to be a taller guy, so I kind of I molded more into a punter, but. No, I mean, I played baseball, football, basketball, and multiple positions in football. So it wasn't really a position that I was always, you know, you know, wanted to be that guy, you know. So just fell into that role. I feel like the, everybody wants to be the star quarterback or yeah. make the game-winning touchdown catch No one wants to be the punter, you no, know. <laughs> nobody wants to pit them inside the five. Yeah, you know? no, nobody wants to But it's to an important that. part of the game. Speaking of, let's go back to a media question now from Double Coverage. Roger Goodgroves has this one. You've had great success pinning your opponents inside the 20 and not giving away touchbacks. Are the coaches pushing you into that as an objective over kick length? I know last week you flipped the field a little bit for the first time, right. and, and I guess it depends on the situation. It right? does, uh, returner situation, and that's something the first couple games I actually struggled with a little bit. And it's all, I feel like, a, com a conformality standpoint as far as, um, I mean, it's the NFL, it's different, you know. and. And, uh, but th that's something I'm beginning to get more comfortable with when I do need to flip the field is, you know, to hit those big punts like I did last week. But, um, you know, at Mississippi State, my first, especially my first couple of years, we had a very powerful offense. 
And so we did. We kicked a lot from the middle of the field. So that's something that I, I did practice a lot. But I, I mean, I got a lot of game reps on it too. And um, and and so here, you know, with our offense, that's something that people don't really look into. Is e- even some games we don't score a lot of points. You know, we punt a lot from the middle of the field, and that's you know props to Blake and them and our defense from keeping you know them pinned back and punting. That, that we do punt from the mid midfield a lot. And um, sometimes your average is down in games, but you know if the inside the twenty stuff's good, then you know we'll be good at that. So. We got quite a returner this week in Kansas City. Too, yeah, by the yeah. Way. I heard, heard, heard he was pretty good, so <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Just trying to keep it away from him. Anthony Wooten of Love Sport Radio. Have you ever tried a rugby drop kick? Um, hmm. I think ever since Michael Dixon did this a couple weeks ago, it kind of blew up. But uh, I mean, I have. Uh, you know, especially like I go back to that first question when you're on a field by yourself a lot, you play around with some things. Okay, sure. And uh, so I have. Um, I'm not going to tell you how. Uh, how productive it was, but uh, I have tried one before. Not in a game, but <laughs> on a practice field. So. Let's uh, continue now with a fan question. David Mark Robinson, uh, this is going way back here. Well, not way back, but kind of back. I recently saw some Tom Tupa footage from the 90s when he stepped in to play quarterback for the Jets against the yep. Patriots. If you had to play quarterback, who would you want to get the ball to on this Dang, team? There's so many. Uh, um, Dante's a big receiver out there, uh, but there's also some other guys uh, that uh, you want to get the ball to. But I don't know. The open man, that's the right question. answer, right? Is that, yeah, is that how it works? The, the guy that's going to catch <laughs> exactly. it is open. No, score. I actually watched that game the other day uh, when we were getting ready to play the Jets. I just been watching some footage on him, and I, I YouTubed it because I'd heard about it. And uh, He actually put on a show. He did two uh, he touchdowns did. in yeah. that game. Right? And they brought, it, they brought in a practice squad quarterback, and, and, and he ended up, you know, he threw a couple picks in yeah, that game. It was the, it's a different rule. They had an emergency quarterback rule. Right. And so uh, Parcells, who was the coach of the Jets, decided we're only going to have one quarterback. Then he passed to Verde, and Tupa was the backup quarterback, active. The inactive quarterback, um, uh, God, who was that? Myra. Uh, Rob Myra, I think yeah, is yeah. who it was. And so then he got hurt. Tore his Achilles, and here comes Tom Tupa because they they would both have to be out. But he played it in college, so it wasn't like a big right. You know, but yeah. still, the punter. I that mean, was cool. You know, that is pretty cool. That is that is would neat. that would not be cool for the Jags. No offense to you if you had to go. Yeah, out there you know, I, I have a lot of faith in Cody and them, so <laughs> <I> <laughs> they, they need to <laughs> keep think that role. Be okay. Fan yeah. question now from Edward Cohen: <clears throat> How did it feel being drafted in the seventh round? Specialists aren't normally drafted too high. A draft phone call is right. pretty special. That's big, man, and um. As soon as I was finishing my college career, uh, I kind of came 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 to peace with if I wasn't drafted or even if I didn't get an opportunity. You know that I I had I was blessed enough to play college football, and I knew I would most likely get an opportunity. And um, and then as soon as you know the spring hit, I got a lot of attention, which was not that it didn't shock me, but I, I've always been a uh, didn't don't get my hopes uh, too high about things. So whenever I started getting a lot of attention in the spring, it kind of you know bumped my confidence and um but getting drafted was just I mean it was an unbelievable feeling and uh, it's something that you, you grow up watching well draft day a movie about it and then you, you yeah. hear stories and see it on tv and, and being able to get the phone call you know I mean, it, was, it was it was surreal it was awesome Lee White has the next fan question have you ever tried your kicking talents at any other sports soccer or rugby for example you we touched on the drop kicking but have you always been a football guy yeah uh never played football. soccer yeah. uh never played rugby um uh, soccer, I, I've played around before just kicking a soccer ball, and it wasn't too good. But uh, I can punt a soccer ball pretty far as a sure. goalie. But, uh, no, I never have. So uh, that's something I might have to try out one day. Back to media questions now. Alex Johnson of Give Me Sport. What are the main differences you've noticed between college and the NFL? I'm sure the, the daily schedule is much different. You're a professional now. What's one thing? But game speed, game action, what's the difference? Um so from playing in the SEC to uh, to here, size wouldn't be a big deal. Speed, it definitely is a little faster, but um, um, I, I think coming from the SEC compared to a smaller division or whatever, I, I think it prepared you a little bit. But the game is a lot faster, and of course, uh, you know, the size is there uh, definitely. But um, as, f- as far as a, a job standpoint, college, if, if you didn't have a great game, and uh, you knew, you know, and especially if your team won, you kind of blew past it and went on to the next week but but here I mean you're performing for your job whether you you win every game or not if you don't execute how you're supposed to execute they always have a plan b so that's something that you know even if the team's winning and, and balling out and doing good you have to keep making sure yourself performs so 
that's a little pressure. We're gonna find somebody else that will. Exactly. That's the way that yeah, works it's part here. of it, isn't it? It is. Now, let's finish with the uh, UK Jag Tag question of the week, brought to you by LGT Vestra US Jag Tag, a simplified version of American football. Played in elementary schools, high schools, and community projects around England. Over three thousand participate. This week's question is from Toby Gold, who's fifteen years old at Preston Manor School in London. Do you practice any trick plays? And if so, how is your throwing? That's a great question, Toby. Yeah, um, I do. And I, I can't talk a lot about it because, <laughs> uh, you know, Jody might get on me. But, uh, no, no, we do. And, um, I mean, every team has a fake going into the game each week. But I, I did play quarterback in high school a little bit and, um, and then moved to receiver later. But, uh, yeah, um, I pitched too a little bit in college. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is interesting. Let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. I think that's a good <laughs> idea. Good. Maybe we'll see it in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Logan, great to see you. Appreciate you coming on today. Thank I know you. our fans of the U.K. will enjoy this visit today. Oh, yeah. And I Appreciate look forward to seeing you this Sunday. Yes, sir. Logan Cook, Jaguars putter with us. We'll have a signed football for one of the uh, questions submitted today from Logan Cook a little bit later. This is the Like a Mobile Jaguars Jam.